I'm not sure what Thermal Wright's plan is, but it sure seems like world domination in the CPU cooler market. They have so many different models from air coolers to water coolers that come in the range of single tower to dual tower, um, different models within those. They come in black, white, ARGB, silver, many different colors. The same with their AIOs. They're black, white, ARGB, 120, 240, 360. I'm sure they probably have a 420 millimeter uh, AIO out there as well, um, but they have a lot of different models. And they're coming out with new ones all the time. I'm pretty sure the one, the main one that we're going to be focusing on today, the uh, Phantom Spirit Evo, came out earlier this year. So they have coolers pretty much in every price range that on paper perform just as well as coolers that cost significantly more. So in my previous video, I did, um, I compared the Peerless Assassin against the Phantom Spirit SE. And in this video, we are going to compare the Phantom Spirit Evo against the other two and see how well it performs. Now, the Phantom, uh, the Peerless Assassin and the Phantom Spirit SE come in at around $35. The Phantom Spirit Evo comes in about $50. So hopefully we're going to see uh, better performance for the premium that we're paying for the Phantom Evo. Now I'll be testing this on my test bench and it consists of a B550 uh, Tomahawk and a Ryzen 9 5900X. I'll be looking at how loud the cooler gets and what its performance using Cinebench R23 at max utilization, which is 12 cores and pulls around 200 watts, and then at six cores, uh, which pulls around 125 watts. And at the end of the video, there will also be an installation guide uh, for those who are interested in seeing how to install the uh, Phantom Spirit Evo. And from my experience, it is very similar to installing the Peerless Assassin and the Phantom Spirit SE. Now, if you find the video helpful, I would definitely appreciate it if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and leave any comments down below letting me know what cooler you would like to see me review next. Now, right off the bat, my initial impression is that this cooler looks pretty nice. I'm a big fan of the all black design. Uh, not only are the fins black, the heat pipes are black as well. Everything is black except for the contact plate at the very bottom. And there is minimal uh, ARGB on the fans. It's probably going to be hard to see, but right here all along the edges are little uh, ARGB LEDs. And then one of them, one of the fans is sandwiched in between the two towers. You can't see the ARGB on that, or you see very little of it at the very top. So I like the less is more mentality that they're going with, but since the middle fan is covered um, or blocked between the two uh, towers, I feel like they should have had just a little bit more ARGB to give it a little bit more of a premium look and flare to the, um, to the cooler. Uh, something like maybe the ring going the whole way around. It would just add a little bit extra, uh, whereas these little partial LEDs, you can barely see. Even the box is a little more premium than the other two. Uh, they came in a uh, yellow uh, cardboard box with minimal black uh, graphics on the front that just kind of have a black outline of the coolers, whereas this one comes in a much nicer looking box. It has some silver like reflective lines going on it. Uh, it's colored. It's got the actual picture of the the uh, cooler on the front. So everything about uh, the cooler just, you know, screams a little bit more premium over the other two. And I'm not knocking the other two. These two are great coolers. So not only is the packaging nice looking, but the uh, Phantom Spirit Evo is also packaged very well without much wasted space. The fans are individually wrapped in plastic and they're secured together in the foam packaging and to save space, the hardware is packed in a box that fits securely between the two towers of the cooler and itself snugly packed inside the foam. The Peerless Assassin and the Phantom Spirit SE were also packaged the same way. It has all the hardware you need to install AM4 and AM5, LGA1700, LGA115X and 1200 and LGA2011 and 2066.
and everything for the most part is labeled very well so it's easy to figure out which um, which hardware goes with which uh, motherboard that you have. Uh, there, on mine there was one that wasn't labeled but it was easy to figure out because everything else was labeled. So the one that I was missing, or the label that was missing was for LGA 2011 and 2066. Uh, there is a back mounting bracket for uh, the LGA sockets for AM4 and AM5. The motherboards come with the back bracket that you can use. And then there are the uh, front brackets, the mounting brackets that are labeled. The, um, the LGA ones are not labeled, so it's just process of elimination. The AM4 one is labeled, which you're also going to use for AM5. And then the other ones, which are for the LGA sockets, they're not labeled, but that's process of elimination. That's what they're used for. And it also comes with a small tube of thermal paste, so it comes with everything you need except for a screwdriver. That's the only thing you need to put this together. And installing it is quite simple, and like I said, the guide is at the end of the video, walking you through step-by-step -step on how to install it. So now on to comparing the actual three coolers, they all roughly come in at exactly the same dimensions. Now, not including the fans, they're all the same dimension for width and for depth. The only one that is different is the Peerless, or the, the Phantom Spirit SE is a couple millimeters shorter than the other two. So these ones come in at 157 millimeters tall, so be aware of that. Whatever case that you're using can support 157 millimeter fan. And the uh, SE version of the Phantom Spirit comes in at 154 millimeters, so it's three millimeters short. Um, another thing to note is that it has exposed heat pipes on it, and because of that, it does have a few less fins than the other two. Another main thing to note is that the Peerless Assassin only has six heat pipes, whereas the Phantom Spirit, both models have seven heat pipes, and because of those extra heat pipes, I don't know how well it's going to be viewed. The heat sink at the bottom, oops, the heat sink at the bottom is slightly bigger on the Phantom Spirit, the two Phantom Spirit models. Now they all have cutouts. Let's see how well you can get there. Cutouts on the bottom fins to allow you to accommodate larger sticks of RAM. However, with the ones that I was using, I actually had to raise the fan up a little bit as well uh, for clearance on those RAM sticks. So as you can see, this is, came right off the, uh, the test bench that I'm probably about a third of an inch above the, um, the tower, uh, or the fan is about a third of an inch higher than the tower. So on paper, the Peerless Assassin and the Phantom Spirit SE um, are fairly similar with respect to their fans. Uh, they are The model numbers are different, however the specs of those fans are quite similar in that they have the same, roughly the same fan speed, the same uh, noise level and the same airflow. With the Phantom Spirit Evo on the other hand, um, its fans are much heavier at 220 gram a piece versus 135 grams. And it has quite a bit higher uh, RPMs at 2150 versus 1500, uh, roughly 1500 for the other two. And it has a slightly higher fan noise at 27 decibels versus the 25.6 that these two are rated. Now that is rated, that is not the actual noise level that's going to come off these uh, the coolers. And it also has a higher airflow and a higher air pressure, which means it should be able to push more air through the fin stacks. And with the pressure that is going to be, it, since it's going through such tight spaces, there's going to be pressure uh, pushing back on that, so it's going to have more pressure to push that additional airflow through those fins as well. So overall, the Phantom Spirit Evo has better specs on paper. However, it does weigh uh, considerably more because not only are the fans heavier, the actual um, the two the towers are heavier as well. So it comes in at around 1.25 kilograms, where the other two come in at around one kilogram. 
So hopefully, you know, the extra price, the added weight and everything translate into better performance. So at max speed, uh, nothing holding it back, the Phantom Spirit Evo actually comes in at around 46 decibel. So this is very similar to the Phantom Spirit SE, but keep in mind the Evo fans can reach 2,150 RPMs, whereas the Phantom Spirit SE only goes up to about 1,500. And then both of these are quite a bit quieter than the Peerless Assassin, which comes in at around 50 decibels. Now in Cinebrench, using all 12 cores at max fan speed, the Phantom Spirit Evo comes in at 76.1 degrees Celsius, which beats the Phantom Spirit SE of 78.1 and the Peerless Assassin at 78.4. So if we turn the fans down on the Evo to match the same 45 decibel level of the Phantom Spirit SE, the temperature does go up to about 76.5, which is still less than what the Phantom Spirit SE reaches. And then adjusting to a quieter 38 decibels, the Evo comes in at 77.9 degrees Celsius, which still performs better than the Phantom Spirit SE at 79.4 and the Peerless Assassin at 79.8. And keep in mind this reduced noise level, the Evo still performs better than the SE and the Peerless Assassin at their max speed. Then moving on and disabling six of the 12 cores. Um, this will bring the wattage down to around 125 watts. And this will be the high end of what will be consumed by gaming. And will kind of give you an idea of what you can expect from something like a 5600X. Now, starting off at max speed, the Evo can cool the 5900X to 69.9 degrees Celsius, which is 1.4 degrees cooler than the SE and the Peerless Assassin. Then when this is adjusted to 38 decibels, the Evo is slightly higher at 70.8, which is still 1.2 degrees and two degrees cooler than the Phantom Spirit SE and the Peerless Assassin. So overall, the Evo is definitely the clear winner. Uh, but if you want to save a few dollars, save $15, you can go with the Phantom Spirit SE. It does run about two degrees hotter at the, the largest variation that we found during the testing. Um, but at the same price, you can go with the Peerless Assassin as well. Uh, there could be aesthetic reasons why you want to get a Peerless Assassin one over the Phantom Spirit SE or even just a regular Phantom Spirit. Uh, they do, they perform pretty close. The biggest difference is, is that the, Phantom, or the Peerless Assassin is quite a bit louder at 50 decibels versus the 45 decibels of the Phantom Spirit SE. And as I mentioned, uh, next we'll be moving on to the installation guide. So stick around if you want to see that. Otherwise, thanks for watching the, uh, the video. I appreciate it if you like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave any comments down below. So for installing A4 and A5, we're going to need this piece opened. And it's gonna give you four hard plastic risers four screws, and there's going to be two mounting brackets, and that's all we are going to need. And if your motherboard is anything like mine, there some of these back plates, uh, for, this is for AIM-4, will be secured firmly to the back of your motherboard. Mine unfortunately isn't, so I will need to hold this onto the back as I try to mount these plastic risers, screws, and uh, the mounting bracket on and once I get one of these secured it'll hold it firmly in place while I can secure the other one. So after I can get the mounting bracket secured I can then lay the uh, case flat on its back and install the actual cooler. Okay. 
when installing this, the curved part is going to face inward towards the CPU. Don't tighten this too tightly because you don't want to crush any of the PCB. It just needs to be nice and snug. And there, now that the top one is secured, these are not going anywhere and I don't need to hold on to the bracket, the back plate anymore. little bit of thermal paste if you're not comfortable in just putting it on like the mess that I did you can use a credit card or get a little plastic spatula or something and you can smear the thermal paste evenly over the CPU that way. And these do have a little bit of a cutout in the fins so it adds a little bit of clearance for the RAM. Before anything gets tightened it's a good idea to line up the screws before you start the process. So get each one over top of the thread. You will need a decently long screwdriver to reach down there and just tighten each side a little bit at the time. You don't want to put too much tension on any one side in case you warp anything. You do a couple of turns on each one until they are snug. You don't want to go too tight because you don't want to strip anything. Now there is a specific direction that these fans need to be installed. It doesn't actually have any arrows showing you which way the air is flowing through. However, it's going to flow through this side and out the back where it has the actual supports for the fan. And it comes with these little metal clips that slide into the holes up here. And these clips are going to secure themselves onto, yeah. So in this case, my ramp is a little bit high. So I'll have to secure the fan slightly above the ram. So it's not going to be flush with the top of the uh, the cooler. It's going to be about a third of an inch above the uh, top metal plate of the cooler. So one of the fans is secured here in between the two fin stacks and one's over here. When it comes to the cables, there's two power cables coming off each fan and it comes with a splitter so you only have to use one, um, the CPU fan hitter on your motherboard. And I get the, for me to get it to look the best, I'm just going to shove most of it right in through the back instead of having those cable go, cables go everywhere and connect it right there. And then you have your ARGB cables and you're going to look usually towards the top of your motherboard. There's going to be a ARG, ARGB uh, hitter there is going to have three pins 
and it's going to match the same as what's there for three pins.